Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim GK, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim GK. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having Matt Riviera. He's a VH1 reality star. He was also on the uh, Megan Wants to Be a Millionaire, and now he's also, besides being an actor and a business person, also he is a professional wrestler. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and pose a question in the chat room, and I'll read it on the air. Matt, welcome to the program. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. It's about 8.01 a.m. in a fabulous Russ Vegas. Arkansas, always good to talk business. I'm actually at one of my businesses right now watching a very beautiful thing. People see it as sand. I see it as green. It's my sand and gravel company here in Arkansas. And so I've got a lot of different things going. And with the really bad economy, the way it is and different things, you have to mm-hmm. kind of get creative to make money in today's society. So you got to have a lot of streams, so to say. There you go. That type of the world, you're doing extremely well. I know, especially I think uh, I went to school in Wichita, Kansas, and sometimes I had to go to, I think, part of what they call Art Kansas. And uh, so that particular region, just really natural with a lot of resources. I guess to begin with, a lot of our people love to hear personal stories from the uh, from our guests. So if you don't mind, kind of tell us about yourself. How did you get started? Yeah, well, I from? do. What's interesting about me is I come from a town with 30,000. I just got back from Los Angeles two days ago from shooting another reality show, which will be airing this September. I can't. Due to contractual obligations, I can't say what that is, but it's a lot bigger than the last one I was on. And the biggest thing I I would like to talk about today is the use of the Internet to achieve success no matter where you are, because I'm a perfect example of that. 15, 20 years ago, if you didn't move to L.A. or I guess a lot of cases, New York, you were not going to be successful in the entertainment world, period. There was no way to really do that. Um, especially if you would in Arkansas, Oklahoma, the southern region, the entertainment business here is just not really a flourishing thing, I guess would be a, a way to put it. And uh, so what I did was uh, I went through a, a bad, broke off engagement and everything. So I said, you know what, I'm going to get through and I want to do some, achieve some goals I've always wanted to. And one of those was to be on a VH1 reality show. When I was in college, I was always a big fan of Flavor of Love, and I love New York and all those shows. I, man, me and my roommates watched mm-hmm. all those, and uh, now I don't really watch as many. I'm, I don't really watch a lot of TV anyway because I'm kind of busy now. But anyway, what I did was actually that was in the days of MySpace. So I started adding all these reality stars, and I noticed a common trend, and that was their top friends were these casting agents. So uh, what wow. I did was uh, I went, and one of my buddies took some pictures of me in a business suit, and uh, I wrote up a short paragraph to sell myself which was southern gentleman with a wild side and started adding all these casting people lo and behold one day they were casting for uh, megan once a millionaire and that actually originally it was going to be called trophy wife and then they realized how absurd it was that me and any of those guys would actually want a <laughs> wife at all and so i think they changed the name so lo and behold what happened was actually i don't think this has ever been told but i went for the casting tried out and uh, Filled out all the paperwork. I mean, it was a ridiculous amount of paperwork. And uh, I actually got cut a week or two before it was supposed to air. And then literally a day before they were going to have their final castings, one of the producers called and said that uh, basically if I could get on a plane that uh, that next day, that they would pretty well guarantee me a spot on the show. So I packed for 30 days. You had to pack everything for 30 full days. So you can imagine how much stuff I had. So anyway, oh, wow. I got packed up. Got on the plane, went to LA. It all happened really fast, and and the rest, as they say, is history. And then, uh, as they know, three shows in, there was a tragedy involved. One of the cast members, uh, I guess, lovers would be what I'd call it. I don't know if that. I guess they were married for a while and whatever. But anyway, my claim to fame has been I was like the last man eliminated on the show because I was actually eliminated in season three. But I had a decent little run on it, and I've made actually a very had a pretty good little career for a while off of a zebra robe. Um, cause I wanted to market myself somewhere between like Hugh Hefner and Ric Flair and Morris Day. So I kind of combined <laughs> all these, but I wanted to be different. So 
I actually went to this website, plushrobes.com, got the zebra robe. And, you know, who doesn't like zebra? Women like it. Guys think it's funny. So I put it all together. And that zebra robe really kind of got me going. But anyway, make a long story short, that's how I did it. And uh, I think there's a lot of people can do the same thing. They just, it, it's, uh, it took a lot of effort. It really did. But it's not rocket science, as they say. Wow. It's just knowing what to do, I think, is the hardest thing and being in the right time and the right spot. Kind of tell us about, some people don't know about the the show. Kind of just tell us in that show what the show was all about. Yeah, sure. Megan Wants a Millionaire featured, there's a girl named Megan Hauserman, and she had a little bitty tiny dog named Lily. I think that was the dog's name, actually. But anyway, she had a pretty good run as a reality star for a while. She was on Rock of Love with Brett Michaels and several other things on VH1. And uh, anyway, she had this show. She wanted to find love. It was a dating show, and there were, I believe, 17 of us millionaires, many of them supposed millionaires, believe me. But anyway, so uh, we were on there and we had to compete in challenges and this, that, and the other and compete for her love. And each week she sent one or two guys home, maybe three the first week. I can't totally remember, but that was pretty well the gist of it. And then whoever won, I don't know if the premise was we'd actually marry her or not. I didn't get that one. But, uh, <laughs> basically, that, but basically that was it. And it was really, we were all in the house, 17 Guys were in a house. I got to experience the reality uh, TV show where there's cameras on us all the time, and they knew how to push a button. I mean, there was nothing in the house but a, a pool table and liquor. And so they woke us up extra early and kept us up half the night. So a lot of a lot of irritable guys. And, and the interesting thing about reality TV is a lot of people think it's all scripted or whatever. No, that really wasn't the case. Okay. Much like so the rest what of it is, is what it is. Well, much like wrestling, they kind of take what you are or the, or the way to do it and bring that out, so to say. And they kind of set some situations up, I think, with the intent that X, Y, Z will happen. And they just kind of let it happen, so to say. Okay. Until they get to a certain point, then they, they intervene. Basically, yeah. They don't want it to get physical. Well, they do, but they don't. I mean, they'll tell you they don't want it physical, but a lot of times it ended up that way. But it was, like I said, it was an interesting experience. Like I said, I just got done shooting another reality show I had. I'm all about setting goals and achieving them this I don't, I don't play for second or third and whatever i go i do it but it's also realistic goals i mean i've been in three movies but i'm not an actor i mean i played very specific roles it was for producers i knew and i have a lot of respect for full-time actors in the sense of their work ethic and what it takes because there's a definite skill to that and I'm, I'm definitely i never went to acting school I'm, I'm, I'm not an actor but the reality tv is stuff that i really enjoy doing and this show I just got in filming, I think, is a lot bigger than the last one I was on. I think that's going to, it was a lot of fun, and I think it's really going to explode come I guess, September, October. Are you allowed to, to announce what the name is, or you have to keep it on the No, I, I can't get it. No, we, okay. practically, I'm, I'm not allowed to, but it was a really, it was a really big one. So I think okay. uh, people will be really entertained by it. Wow. So putting all these guys into a small house, in a sense, to compete for one girl affection. What was it like? You guys share the same room and competing for one girl. What was the attitude of that? I mean, was Megan, was that hot? I mean, there's, you just really, everybody just wanted to do that? There's one person? That's interesting. Oh, it's all but, about the show. I was a weird cast of guys, and I got to know some of them after the fact, and they were as weird and off camera as they were on. And I'm not a normal guy at all, but I was the most normal of that group. And that's really saying something. <laughs> but there were, uh, I really don't know what, I couldn't figure out a lot of those guys, what their intentions were. It was a day, it was odd. And there were some of them on there that did some stuff that was just absurd to try to, quote, win her over, but they were serious about it. And I mean, they did some ridiculous stuff. And for me, it was, I was on my toes the whole time because I was always thinking, okay, what am I going to do? What am I not going to do? to look the way I went on camera because I've got a degree in broadcast journalism. So a little bit, I know a little bit about everything about production editing and whatever. So for me, it was a high strung experience because I could never relax. There were cameras on us all the time. And I was always thinking about what to do. And it all happened so fast. I mean, they called me the day before they were going to start. So, I mean, I didn't even think I was going to be on a show. And then sure. within 24 hours, I'm in LA, you know, trying to get stuff together. So I really didn't have time to prep this last one. I, I did. And so I think I knocked this last one out of the park, so to say. It was really, everything went perfect on it. I really wouldn't change the thing. But, you know, it's, it's, 
it's interesting. It's, it's real funny. A guy told me back when I was 16, he said, so 10 years from now, he said reality TV will dominate. And I thought he was insane. I had no idea what he meant. I don't think anybody else would either, but he read the, the media books or whatever magazines and he saw it. And then, boy, that could have been more true. Reality TV is cheap to produce. These guys can make a lot of money on it. The talent, they don't have to pay a lot. It um, just goes on and on the benefits. I'm actually meeting with some producers now. I've got a concept for a show that we're going to try to do. It's actually called Matt Wants a Milf. And I've had this idea for a while. I think it'd be fantastic. It'll it'd be something that really hasn't been done. Young guy with all these older women competing for him. I think it'd be really neat. I mean, there's been a few variations of it, so to say, but not like that. So I'm kind of, I've got that kind of in the works. And uh, with the wrestling, it all kind of ties together. I started wrestling when I was at my first match when I was 21, but I got into it when I was 15. I've been in it a really long time and really enjoyed it. I enjoy the people in it. And uh, it's an art. That's the whole thing about wrestling. It's an art. And the art is... Mm-hmm to tell stories that are believable and present something in a ring that looks as real as possible without killing each other. And that's a... We're going to take a break for one second, then we're going to talk about more about your wrestling career. We'll be back in one moment, so I'll give a little bit more time. Be right back. Thanks, Matt. Sure. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. We're back with Matt Riviera. He was on the reality show, Reality Star. To one, Megan Swanson, millionaire, and also he's a professional wrestler. So let's talk about your wrestling career. Well, like I was saying, I had my first match when I was 21. I went to the wrestling school and don't have visions of a big, huge air conditioned building with nice painted walls or whatever. This was a little bit of what I would call a shack <laughs> with a boxing ring. It was a boxing ring with a plastic canvas on it that, that really scraped you up, and it was brutal. No air conditioning. The ceiling was so low, I couldn't even stand on the second rope. It was as old school as you could get, so to say. And I went the first time I was 15 and took what they call in wrestling a bump, which is basically where you fall. And I landed and I said, man, this hurts. I don't like this at all. This is not supposed to hurt. And so anyway, I, it just kept eating at me. And finally, I went back to school when I was a freshman in college and finished it up and had my first match. And I guess the rest is history. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. it's, a lot of times it still hurts just as bad now as it did then. <laughs> but it's a very physical business and it's like everything, a lot of some of it's more real than people think, and it's interesting. You'll see. I watch wrestling with people. I don't watch wrestling a whole lot anymore, but when I do, it's somebody does something, they're like, "Oh, that was fake," or whatever. And I'm like, "Man, that, you know, that really hurt." And then they'll see something else. Yeah, really. They'll see something else. They're like, "Oh my gosh, that killed them!" And I'll be like, "Man, I didn't even hurt them." Is there really a way? Some of these acts, even if they're, I used to watch a lot of wrestling back in the eighties. I think when it was WWF or something like that, before it became WWE, which I left alone. But physically, how did they prepare themselves to be hit by a chair? I mean, you're going to be, have to really work out and have some really tight muscles to take a blow from a chair. That's a great question. It's all about technique. I can hit you with a chair and it's going to jar you, but it's not going to kill you. And you and I can still go eat lunch. But it's all about technique. There's art to all this stuff. And some guys are good at certain parts of it and certain guys aren't. I've seen guys get really hurt with chairs. And uh, where, like, I'm not a high flyer, I'm not good at, I'm going to do a backflip off the top rope, where some guys can do that, like, no problem, but they try to swing a chair, they'll kill somebody. So it's kind of a, it's interesting balance. I've got this company, it's TCW Wrestling. You can check it out at tcwwrestling.com, and uh, it's going incredible. We're launching our one-hour high-def TV show this weekend, and it airs in the Memphis market on CW30. It debuts this Saturday night prime time and also in Joplin, Missouri, in that market, which covers three or four states. Actually, you mentioned Kansas. It goes in there. But the complete television listings are tcwwrestling.com. But that is a company okay. 
that it, we're really trying to bring back what was good the other day. And I think what we're seeing is so interesting. When I was in L.A., there were billboards everywhere for the new Dallas show. And they were mm-hmm. very simplistic things. They had a character greed, a character lust, a character whatever. And uh, <laughs> so what you're seeing is, is these simplistic stories with relatable characters, with characters that can play the parts well that sell. And it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it's at 1982 or now. Shows like Dallas and what was that other thing? Like on Raw, Big Man Vader came back. Place went ballistic. These are character-driven things. And as hard as Vince McMahon and WWE tries to make it a brand like the circus or like monster trucks or like the Globetrotters, it ain't happening. People are going to pay to see a main event headline guy or a match or something. And I'm the same way. And I understand Vince McMahon's philosophy. You want... You don't want to put your eggs in a basket because he's had performers at major events say, I'm not going through that curtain unless you pay me X dollars. And so what do you do? You know, you've got whatever, 25, 50,000 people, whatever the case is, and you've got a guy that's supposed to be in the main event that these people pay to see this match. And that performer says, I'm not going out there unless you pay me this money. It's a horrible situation. And I know yeah, that. But people are going to pay to see Hulk Hogan versus Andre, The Rock. Oh, again, absolutely. Whatever. And so... There's just not an easy way out of that. But anyway, TCWWrestling.com, it's really going to be a good thing. We're expanding fast. We've got meetings coming up in more and more markets. And uh, I really think by the end of the year, we should be the number three or number four company at the least in in the United States. So really excited about that. And that's going really well. Well, anyway. Okay. No, go ahead. I was just going to say lots is good and everything's going well and I actually did an interview for a wrestling documentary this past weekend, and they said, what separates TCW from the rest? Because there's no wrestling, there's a lot of talk, it's in business, people are going to do this. And it's pretty simple, we had it failed, and everything we said we'd do, we've done it. A year ago, we launched a half-hour show, modestly produced and everything, we built this thing step-by-step. Step. My goal was, within one year, to launch a one-hour show. We beat it by about a month, and not only is it just a one-hour show, it's a high-def show, and it's pretty, pretty tremendous. Again, we got our own in-house production company that's doing it, and it's like I said, one step at a time. But I'm a firm believer in you know, if you set your mind to something, just keep chiseling at it. And again, realistic goals. I meet so many wannabe models, and these girls, God bless them, they just their goals are just unreasonable. There's no way that they they're going to go to Hollywood and be the next Britney Spears next week. Everybody's not going to. So. Absolutely. Well, I have a question real quick. When it comes to people who are looking to become on reality shows, what can they expect? Well, that depends on, it's like in any other business, it all depends on the company you sign with and the show you go on. There's mm-hmm. been a tremendous difference between 51 Minds at VH1, which was the group uh, I was under contract with when I did Megan Was a Mean Air, and this most recent show, which people will see. It was like night and day in a lot of different ways, and some good, some bad, but Basically, it's just like anything else. Just because it's reality TV does not mean that they're magically professional and magically have all their paperwork together and magically know how to conduct business. That's not the case. Um, it's just okay. like any other business. There's a lot of big businesses in this country that somehow or another tend to make it and are not run well. And so it really just kind of depends. Okay. So the expectation once you do get cast from that point on, they feed you, they uh, so you don't have to worry about food. You is gonna be there for about thirty days or two months or something. And it depends on the it just kinda all depends. Like I said, it's all different. What you can expect is I still go to Las Vegas quite often. And when I'm there I usually get recognized by somebody, whether it's a waitress or something, who recognizes me off the show. If you're a guy and you go on a reality show and you like women, after you go on a show, you'll have plenty of women, believe me. I mean, I had hundreds of women come out for a multitude of reasons that added me on, it. Like I said, at that time, MySpace. But, you know, it's uh, <laughs> women like guys that are they think are big and famous. So <laughs> if you're a guy and you like women like I do, you believe me, there's going to be plenty of them. You really can't screw it up if you get on a reality show. <laughs> wow. I guess lastly, what you would like to advice you would like to leave us with? And then we have another question up here. What they were asking about, how can they locate casting directors to submit their information? Oh, sure. Well, locating the casting directors is really simple now. It's a lot easier now than it was. There's a website you can go to. It's realitywanted.com. And you go to that website, you fill out a profile picture or whatnot, and sign up on an email listing, 
and they literally will send you email listings. I can't remember if it's a daily or weekly basis or what, but whenever there's a mm-hmm. showcase, they will send you a listing and it tells the requirements, the age or whatever. And then you simply apply. And I promise you, if you do this, Nine times out of ten, the casting people will get back with you, and they will take a look at you. I mean, because wow. this casting process, yeah, the casting process for these shows is not as easy as you think. There's not a lot of people that can up and leave their job, their business, or whatever for even a week, two weeks, or whatever, because that's what this stuff requires. Like this last show I did, I was in L.A. nine days. Well, I own, I own my own businesses, so I could go and do it. But if you have mm-hmm. a regular, it's one thing to consider too. If you have a regular nine to five job, you're not the boss and you can't take off for a week or two. You really might want to reconsider even trying to get on a reality show because if you cannot commit to being gone for a while to do this, you're really wasting your time. Okay. And you don't get any compensation from this, do you, at the very end? It really depends. It depends on the contract. Okay. Some can pay a lot of money, some can't. It just really depends. I mean, I wish I could say there's a certain way that, that a reality show is done, but, man, I'm telling you, it's just they're all different. It's across the board. Okay. What do you like to leave us with? Any advice? Well, my advice is this is bad economic times. You can see a lot of things going on that aren't good that, that are happening. And I just want to say, basically, we're all in this together, and it doesn't matter if you're black, white, from another country. These issues are not just United States. They're global issues. And we're all human, and we're all in this together, and hopefully uh, we can persevere, and good will prevail, and keep going on and on. If you're a young person and want to break in business, it's changed a lot. My advice is, and this is something some people might disagree with, but I think if you really want to make a lot of money, and you're a young guy, and you don't want a lot of debt, I highly recommend learning a trade. I mean, you go go and you find an electrician, they make a lot of money. One of my good friends is a full-time traveling mechanic. Believe me, he has less debt and makes a lot more money at age 26 than my other friends who are 26, 27, who went to college and got not to pick on this particular one, but an art degree or whatever. I mean, you know, and so in my opinion, unless you have the financial means to pay for your college up front, it doesn't make sense to go and get tens of thousands of dollars in college loans to go to college to get a job and then get that job and you're going to make eighteen to twenty five thousand dollars a year. Why do that when you can go to a two year school, learn a trade, get out, make fifty, sixty thousand dollars plus, have less debt, make more money. That's what I'd like to leave young people with today. Great. Well Matt, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. Thank you so much. And if they want to look you up, you have a company website. Yeah, absolutely. Uh my personal website uh, we just launched not too long ago was themattriviera dot com. That's themattriviera.com. I have a Facebook page. You can look me up on there. I'm about to actually launch a fan page because my friends got kind of maxed out. But, you know, if you listen to the show today and have any questions at all, have any comments, please feel free. Get on Facebook. Look me up. Send me a message. I'll be glad to address that. The wrestling company, again, tcwwrestling.com. There's a new website being launched this weekend on that end. Things are great. I wish everybody the absolute best. Like I said, if you want to go on a reality show, I highly recommend realitywanted.com. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, that if you do that, sure. it'll get you a good picture taken. That will work. So I wish everybody the great. best. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it, Matt. Have a great day. Thank you for the you interview. Too. Take care. Again, that was Matt Rivera. He was on the VH1 reality show, Mega Most Millionaire. And he has a new show coming out. So stay tuned. Everybody, thank you for listening to The Core Business Show. Tim J.K., your host. Everybody have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.